Hi, it's Cisco with Acrobotic and I'm here to talk to you about how to get started with the Arduino command line interface. A few days ago, the Arduino folks announced the release of a new tool, the command line interface for developers. This allows us to forego completely of the Arduino IDE, the graphical user interface, and use text-based commands for interacting with Arduino and Arduino compatible hardware. A command line interface is useful for many reasons, but the most important one is that it allows us to perform certain tasks like updating the firmware programmatically. So you can include it in your own application and do all the hardware related tasks within a single program. No need for sending users to download the Arduino IDE for say upgrading the firmware that's running on their end product. As everything that Arduino does, it is open source, but if you want to include it as part of a commercial product, then you need to license it from them. With all that being said, let's go ahead and get started. Making sure you've installed the Arduino IDE, you can navigate to the command line interface repository. I'll leave the link in the description of the video. Instead of downloading the entire source code so that we compile it, we can just scroll down and download the executable for our operating system, in my case, Mac OS X. Keep in mind that this is an alpha version, so depending when you watch this video, things might be slightly different. But for now, this is how we make it work. We go ahead and download it. And I'm going to open a terminal window on Mac OS X. If you're not familiar with Unix commands, I recommend you take a tutorial on it. I'm not gonna be describing in detail some of the common tasks we do using operating systems like Linux or any Unix derivative, but I'll focus on explaining the commands related to the Arduino command line interface. I'll go ahead and change directories onto my downloads folder, unzip the file I just downloaded, I'm going to rename it and I'll move it to a directory inside my environment path. This will be useful so that I don't have to type out the entire relative path to the location of the executable. If this doesn't make sense, you'll see a little bit later why this is useful. I'll go ahead and need root permissions to create a directory inside my user local folder that I'll call bin. In your case, that directory might already exist. Go ahead and move it. And this optional step was so that we can just type out the name of the executable without adding the entire path to the location of that executable. The first thing I want to do is create a new sketch. To do that, I'll use the options, sketch, new, and the name of the sketch. In my case, my first sketch. As you can see in the output, it creates it in the default directory of your Arduino installation, which is inside your user folder, documents, Arduino, and it's a file that resides inside that directory called my first sketch. We can see the contents of that file. And is what you would expect in any sketch that will be built within the Arduino environment, containing the two standard functions loop and setup. I'll go ahead and modify it. And you can use any text editor you want. I prefer to use this one that's built into the terminal, but you can use other things like Sublime Text or even the text editor that comes as default with Mac OS X. I'll just create a simple blink sketch. So I'll change the built-in LED mode to be an output. And then I'll just use the two digital writes that are standard to the Blink program. 
one second delay in between. And I'll go ahead and save and exit this file. The next step is to compile the sketch. And if this is the first time you're running the command line interface, you'll need to add support for the board that you're using. In my case, I'm going to be using an Arduino Uno clone. And I'll go ahead and connect that to the computer and use the command line interface to see if it's recognized. You can do that by using the options board list. And after a few seconds, I'll see that even though the port is recognized, it says that the board name is unknown. So I need to use the Arduino command line interface once again to install support for the Arduino AVRs. Once that process is done, if I list the connected boards again, it indeed tells me that the board that's connected is an Arduino Uno. In my case, is a clone board, but it's still recognized. I can now go ahead and compile the sketch by using the option compile, the flag FQBN, which stands for Fully Qualified Board Name, and give it the name of the board, which is Arduino ABR Uno. And lastly, the entire path where my sketch is, in my case is Documents Arduino, my first sketch. It doesn't need to go all the way down to the file, but rather the directory where that file that sketch file resides. Once the compilation ends, and we know we don't have any errors on the sketch, we can go ahead and upload the code to the board. We're going to use the command line interface with the option upload, which takes a few parameters. The first one is the port with the flag P, and we'll use the port that was recognized by the previous command then the fully qualified board name once again and the path to the sketch that we want to upload and once that's done you can see that the code is running indeed the built-in led is blinking once every two seconds so we've successfully used the Arduino command line interface to first install support for the Arduino Uno and then to compile and upload a simple sketch to the board. If you like my videos, I invite you to go to my Patreon page and chip in a buck or two. It helps me dedicate more time into this and release the videos a little bit faster. But whatever you do, don't forget to like, subscribe, or leave me a comment. I'm also very active on social media. You can interact with me on Twitter, Instagram, or Facebook. And lately, I've been using the community tab of the channel to interact with some of you. So I hope you have a great day, and I'll be seeing you soon.